Hi and welcome to another Today in Git video. What we're doing this week is looking at the GoCycle GX in a little bit more depth than what we did in the test when we put it up against the Hummingbird when we sped around Coventry. So the GX is a folding cycle. It's been voted the e-bike of the year. It's circa £3,000 to buy, British. It's ready to go. You can attach your phone to the handlebars and you can alter the power curve or the amount of support it gives you. It's got a little boot boost button underneath the bars that acts a little bit like a, a throttle. So if you hit a particular hill and you need extra boost, you can just press it, which is really helpful. It's got three gears and on our tests, even doing a 16 mile circuit with some lumps in it, some Derbyshire lumps, it went up easily even in gear three, which was really good. Now I'm a relatively fit cyclist, I know that helps a bit, but bearing in mind, once you get a little bit of pressure on your pedals, you're doing 15 to 16 miles an hour on this thing, which is the legal limit. Right, looking around the bike, the frame is made of aluminium. So this down here is aircraft spec aluminium. You've got lovely catches for releasing the bike. So when you fold it up, it's very easy to do. If you've been used to a Brompton, you're used to something that's a little bit more, dare I say, Heath Robinson or of its time. This has been modernized, as we said before, it's designed by a Formula One professional. Would help if I got the pedals out of the way. So it folds up very, very easily. It's got lights inbuilt. So you press the button on the lights. It would help if I started the bike. So there's a little push button on the side. We press that, the bike powers up. We need to put the lights on, lights front and rear. One small, this is a test bike that's gone around numerous people. And one, one thing we've noticed is the bracket on this one is a little bit wonky. But however, with a little bit of TLC and a small repair, it'd be absolutely fine. And I think that's more about how the bike has been treated prior to coming to us. On this bike, it's got muddy wheels. And apologies for that, because it doesn't look particularly beautiful in pictures. But the reason it's got muddy wheels is we've tested it almost everywhere. It's great. It's robust. When you're carrying the bike and moving it around, you don't have to worry about chains getting your legs um, or trousers dirty. Important for commuters. It's got a little bit of suspension in the rear, not a lot, but you, you notice it a little bit. It's got disc brakes. Now, some people worry about discs because a disc, if they fall off the bike and injure themselves or somebody else, these are covered. So it's got cowls on the disc brakes and it's got two wheel power. So the power goes to both wheels. So all in all, this has been thoroughly thought out. Somebody's looked at it from an engineering perspective thought about all the different things that a commuter would need from a bike. You might be wondering why an e-bike as well. You, well. Couldn't you just have a Brompton without power? Yeah, of course you could. But if you ride through, for example, London or Birmingham, and it's an unusually hot summer's day, and we have quite a few of those nowadays, let's say 25, 30 degrees, and you want to get to a meeting, and you're boiling hot and sweating, you don't arrive in a very good state. Um, with e-bikes, we talk about dress for your destination. So you dress how you want to arrive at the destination you want to get. To. So let's talk about when you get to your destination. You get to your destination, your bike's like this. What do you do with it? Then we need to power off the bike and we do the handlebars first. And I say, if you've been using something like a Brompton, you'll remember this order. Think about if people are progressing from upgrading from Brompton to one of these, they'll want to remember the order. It's what habit, we're creatures of habit. We can fold in the pedals. With these pedals, we just pull them towards us and they fold, simple as that. And then we've got the clip for the back, simple as that. We leave the stand up. So we move this around, job's a good one. And then we've got, a, it's like, I'm gonna say a rubber band. It's a, it's a very posh Formula One-esque rubber band. We clip on and the bike's good to go. How we push the bike is foot at the back, lift it up and we push the bike. So you can push it through the railway station wherever you don't notice that don't notice the weight if there's one fault on this the stand's great but if you get the wrong side if you don't knock them both in together you can get sometimes one leg stuck down 
it's just a habit you have to go into of doing it properly but that's you know it's a minor thing addressing the comments from the previous video up against the hummingbird if you remember we picked the bikes up and we put them in the back of a nissan leaf and one of the things was particularly if you're a very tall person like me that you've got a lot of saddle that gets in the way of shutting the boot on the car what people very helpfully pointed out that i should have realized is we can undo this um, posh wing nut we can just drop the saddle down there that'll do and we can lift this up and put it in the car and that would apply for example if you're on a Avanti Trains West Coast uh, luggage rack and you need to fit it in this fits in those very easily the thing about the bike is the weight um, it's probably best if I put the bike back together again let's give you a good idea of how quickly this can be done so putting the bike back together so I'm going to do the reverse of what I did before which is number one always remember the rubber band David so we, we talked about not a good name because it's a, it's a posh rubber band so this is me as a rank amateur imagine if you're doing this every day remember those days when we commuted so what we've got is we've got the bike um, I'm going to kick the stand out of the way and this is what I mean about the stand it's just remembering to do it properly uh, take a bit of the lawn out there put my uh, put my feet behind it you've got that now if we pick pick it up i'll leave the pedals folded in because we don't need them if you pick the bike up it's front heavy and that's all to do with battery placement and also remember this thing is two-wheel drive it is front heavy however when you ride it you don't notice it it sits really firmly on the ground it rides really well really well people worry about small wheels i wouldn't worry about small wheels feels absolutely great on the technology front to charge the go cycle gx comes with the charger the um, charging port is there plug it in they don't expect you to add your own three pin plug or anything like that it's all together plug it in leave it there bike charge charging takes several hours to charge but do you really ever wear this thing down you don't you really over topping it up because it it does 40 miles range easily um, once again depends if you're using the full electric spectrum or you are pushing on yourself on the pedals therefore the range will be extended what you can do on the bars is you can mount your phone you've got little little rubber bandy things here when i say the rubber bandies these are posh formula one style rubber bandies and that secures uh, any standard smartphone will fit on there and then what you can do is alter the power profiles you can it tells you battery status and a lot more stuff or for example if you just wanted to use your phone for navigation it's a good secure place for it to sit and it's as easy as that really other things that they've thought about on here is just even like the cables the, the cables have got a really good shrouding on them that you know makes them last a long time lovely lightweight mountain bike style um, levers this bike stops on a sixpence we've tested it out stopping on a sixpence in the wet really good the tyres are go cycle supplied if you ever want replacements um, they are market available but go cycle supply them if you have a puncture I mean what I would suggest you do is you put milk or similar brands in here to give it puncture resistance but if you ever have a puncture you don't have to remove the wheel literally just repair your puncture from the side uh, and that's it really it's a great little bike great little bike yes they are three thousand pounds UK but if you're commuting regularly you want something fold up and go in the back of the car fold up to go on your train and you want to dress for your destination and get there without perspiring this is a fantastic tool to have go to go cycle website there's lots of accessories you can get and this bike was supplied to us by go cycle with this great bag inside it's got space for a laptop you can get your groceries in here and go cycle themselves do lots of instruction videos uh, that cover this and the instruction videos are absolutely brilliant. All you do is you put your bike near the top of the tube, you click this clicker in, put it down, and that's it. You've got a great little bag that sits here, zip it up. So you can nip down to the shops, as on the Go Cycle video, they've got baguettes in here. Once again, the way their bike rides, you don't really notice this, and it's great. So from a commuter, you've got your bag, you can take this off and use it for work. You've got mug guards, you haven't got to buy extra, you've got everything all in one package. So thanks ever so much for watching, 
hope you like this the normal stuff about subscribe liking and all that sort of thing uh, we very much appreciate it and you can also go over to titaniumgeek.com where we've got far more reviews